Hey, Professor Wise Guy here with a quick hit on critical thinking. Now, I want to illustrate critical thinking today with an online logic puzzle. It's called nonograms. A nonogram puzzle is a real simple thing. It has a grid, like you see here, and in this case, it's a 5x5 five five grid. They do 10x10, 10 15x15, 10, 15 20x20, 20 20, and they're much more complicated, but this is a simple version of it. The grid will have at the top numbers and along the side, the left side, numbers. Now what these numbers mean is that, like for example, here in this first column, uh, somewhere along here there's going to be one black square. Uh, somewhere along this one there's going to be one black square. Now on this one there are going to be two black squares in a row, and one or more spaces, and then one black square. And then there is a, a single a space followed by a group of three and same thing here. Here they're all they happen to be solids and so there's going to be three in a row but they could be anywhere. So let's look at this thing. When we start this three, let's start with that one. The three could be say these three but maybe that's wrong. Maybe it's these three or maybe it's wrong. Maybe it's these three. So which one is it? Well we could guess but that's just guessing. We don't want to guess. But did you notice anything? In all three of these examples, the one in the middle always is black. We know it has to be black. So we're going to mark that one in. Now, once we know that, we know it's two in a row. Well, that second in a row can't be up here, right? It has to be down here. And then we know there has to be a blank. So suddenly we're making some progress. But which of these two is black? We don't know. Over here, we got kind of lucky. One and three, one and three. Well, one and three, that's four, and then there's a space between, that's five. There's only one way that could go in, so we go one, space, and three. Cool. One, space, and three. And so now, all of a sudden, I know where my three is. See, I'm taking what I know, like that that one was had to be black for this first row, and building from there to find the stuff I don't know. Now, look here. These two are, are blanks, so my three has to be over here. And suddenly I've got my two ones there, so the rest of these are all blank. This row's a two, ah, and that row's a three, and it's done. And so I say, done. I have solved my puzzle in four minutes and 11 seconds. Well, it actually didn't take, take that long. Let's work through one more just to, just to make sure we've got this. Uh, ooh, this one looks like it might be a little harder. Oh, well, there's a two, there's a one and a one, a two, a three, a two and two though. Two plus two is four, and the space makes five, so we know that's got to be there, space, there. A four, remember what we did with the three a minute ago, the four could be these four, or it could be these four. Those are the only two possibilities, but in both cases, the middle three are black. And so now two could be here, or here, which means we know those two are blanks. Well, suddenly we know the two here has to be over here, so that one can't be a black. Uh, the three could be one, two, three, or one, two, three, so we know this one is black. And look, this one, there it is. So we can mark out all of those. We're closing in. We could do the same thing with the three that we did here, and suddenly we know that's a three. And notice these are both twos. So there's our twos. Well, there's only one place for that one to be. So now we're good. The two here in this column, well, it's already taken up. So these have to be blank. Now suddenly it's really easy. The four goes across like that. And the three like that. A minute 29. Now, I do these things a lot. Um, and I'm talking you through it, so it's taking me a little bit longer, but let me just do one at my normal speed. Okay, new puzzle. Three and one, there's that. Oh, that's got to be a two. Uh, one is one, and that's a three. Now that's, whoops, messed up. There, these threes, do we know they're there? Ah, and that's blank, so there we go. Boom, 18.44 seconds. Uh, it's not that I'm brilliant, I've just done it a lot. But what I'm doing is simple. 
I'm taking what they give me, and then I'm saying, well, what do I know from that? And then that lets me see some more, and I know more from that. I never guess, because guessing is kind of silly. There's no advantage to guessing. Instead, I use deductive reasoning. I take what I know, and I build from that, and I find the things that I didn't know, but now I do. Of course, nobody cares that I know this, but that's a matter for a different day. Now, I'm not suggesting that everyone needs to work nonagrep puzzles. It's not for everybody. Some people like puzzles, some people don't. But here's the thing. Most logic puzzles employ critical thinking because they do some pretty basic things. They have us look at what we know, and then we draw on what we know and say, well, what could be and what must be, and suddenly we find ourselves knowing stuff that we didn't know before. That's a good thing. That's critical thinking. Think about it.